Bagpipe Him a Day, Day 110. Down Ampney, Ralph Vaughn Williams, 1906. And as always, the sheet music to my bagpipe arrangements will be on Bagpipe Him a Day on Facebook. And this tune is almost entirely associated with Come Down, O Love Divine. There's one hymnal that has this tune with Spirit of Truth and Grace. There's another hymnal that has this a tune with To Those Who Came Before. But generally, it's, it's the uh, Come Down, O Love Divine. Now, this tune all fits within the one octave range of the bagpipe chanter. The issue is it has, it's in a major scale with the sharp seventh. And the Highland Bagpipes, as you probably know, is a flat seventh. So instead of like, it needs that one. Now there is an alternate fingering for that. It's, um, it's if when the Highland Pipes are written in A, in two sharps, A mixolydian, they really sound a half step above that. And B flat, but speaking of the written notes, if you finger C, which is these two fingers off, and lift this one finger off here, so these three fingers are off, on most modern chanters that will give you a nice in tune high G sharp, which is the tune, which is the note you need for this tune. Uh, on some old chanters, you can do this, like finger E this upper hand ring finger off, and then also lift off the thumb. In effect, you're playing high A, but these two fingers down brings the pitch down. Uh, it doesn't usually work on, on modern chanters. It works like an old 1960s Hardys and uh, chanters and things like that. So the third version, I actually have three versions written out. The third version is the actual tune with all those G sharps. And let me play that first so you get a sense of the tune. So you see it does have, in the uh, fourth bar in the uh, second line, there is that um, high G natural, which is, uh, but the other Gs are sharp. So yeah, so you can look at that third version to see the actual thing, and you can play it like that, just with the bagpipes ordinary Gs. You just wouldn't want to play that along with a uh, choir and organ. For those, in, unless you're doing the high, G sharp fingering when you when you're supposed to and actually follow the music of that last uh, that third uh, setting uh, you're going to want to avoid that note so in the harmony whenever that high G sharp appears one of the harmony voices is playing your C sharp down here your ordinary piper C and one of the harmony voices is singing the, your E so whenever that G sharp appears, you can substitute either note and it'll blend with the choir and organ. So my second setting here is one to play along with choir and organ. And I've substituted the E for the high G sharp at one point and the C for the high G sharp for another point. Why? Just because I thought it, were, it made the melody kind of sound better. I don't know, maybe it won't for you. So you might want to use the E both times or um, or a C both times, it's up to you. Anyway, so here you go, this is the second version, second setting. <laughs>
that's the version you want to play along with choir and organ. You're going to, where they're singing the high G sharp, you'll be playing E or C, you'll be blending with other voices in the choir, uh, and also going on in the pipe organ. So you should be good. Now the top version, which I've saved for last, is the one that you can play for solo. So, um, for example, where the tune goes with that high G, uh, should be a high G sharp. You can dot the high A and cut the high G. So you're playing the wrong note, but you're just getting past it quicker. So instead of going, you're going, so you're just kind of shortening the, uh, the incorrect note. So here we go. And then at the, the first bar of the second line of that top setting, I have two Fs. When you're playing solo, the, the fact that that first F is going to clash with the choir and organ is not going to matter. So it's not something you'd play along with uh, other musicians. So anyway, the top one is just kind of a solo version. <laughs> Thank you.